Now, I asked a very simple question. Which will be your choice? Which will you choose? And the beautiful part is it's in our hands to make that choice. And, and we're making a choice this morning to choose heaven or hell. Now, let's review briefly. We are choosing between this morning, this very moment, light and darkness. We're choosing between the tree of life and having no blessings whatsoever. We're choosing between access to the throne of God or access to the abode of the devil. And we're choosing to be in a place where there is no curse or a place that will be cursed forever. And we're choosing between rest, eternal rest, or choosing a place where there will never be any rest. And we're also choosing a place there's nothing but pleasure as opposed to a place where there's nothing but eternal torment. And we're choosing a place where there are no tears as opposed to a place where they'll be weeping and gnashing the teeth forever and ever and ever. Now I want to summarize each section of that to maybe stick it a little bit stronger in our minds. In hell there will be darkness forever. There will be no blessings. There will be the boat of the devil. Be cursed forever. No rest ever. Constant torment forever. And weeping forever. You say, you mean somebody will choose to go there? I want you to remember the lack of preparation is a choice to go there. The lack of preparation is a choice to go to hell. But let's summarize the beauties of heaven that we've seen. There is a choice to have constant light, choice to have access to the tree of life, a choice to be forever in the presence of the throne of God. A choice to be where there will be nothing but constant blessings forever and ever. A choice where there's eternal rest. A choice where there's nothing but pleasure. And a choice where there's no tears and no weeping and no crying and no pain forever and ever. Now the number eight of the... That's a summary of the seven and number eight... It's a place prepared for the righteous or it's a place prepared for the devil and his angels. As I prepared this lesson and studied it, I tried to envision how is it that anyone would ever choose hell over heaven? And I don't know how. I can't fathom how anyone would ever make that choice. And so it looks like to me the choice of heaven it ought to be so easy to know that God loved mankind so much, and that's me and that's you, that he would look down and say, I love these people that I've created so much that I'm going to send my only begotten son, Jesus, who too loves mankind enough to come down and take on the form of a human being be tempted in all points like as we suffer, face adversities, and he loved us enough to die for us, to assure us, and going to leave and go back and prepare a place of heaven for us. And he's going to come again any time, day, tomorrow, ten years, we don't know when, coming back to receive us that are prepared for him. That ought to be such an easy choice, shouldn't it? Such an easy choice. On the day of Pentecost, Peter was talking to some lost people. I tell you how lost they were. They had literally crucified the Son of God. They didn't know there was a Son of God. They thought he was an imposter. But they had participated in the crucifixion of Christ. As Peter convinced them that they had crucified the Son of God, in verse 37, just prior to this verse, they cried out and said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? How can we escape hell? We crucified the Son of God. And I'm going to give you the same answer Peter gave them. 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the message we still preach today. Repent and be baptized. Repent is a total change of mind. I was visiting someone recently and I had mentioned that through the years with our new convert studies that we have, I know at one place I kept up, about 95% of them remained faithful. And the person said, but you emphasize repentance. And a lot of times people don't emphasize repentance. You know why repentance is so important? Because as I keep saying, repentance is preceded by godly sorrow that one is so sorrowful that they have sinned against God and they have a total change of mind. And then they're ready to say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I will do it. That's what they meant on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.37. Men and brethren, what should we do? Just tell me what to do. I'm ready. My mind is changed. And I'm ready to serve you totally for the rest of my life. Well, then it's simple, you see. Then what do you do? Confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and then be buried in water wherein the blood of Christ will take away those sins. And now you're a recipient of heaven and remain faithful to the day you die. Now to Christians, he would say, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sins. That's to the Christian. Walk in the light and confess our sins when we sin. Say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And he is just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Did you know it's possible today for every person here that's old enough to understand what sin is and what righteousness is? It's possible that nobody could leave this building today unprepared to meet God. It's possible. Wouldn't that be great to know that every human being old enough of age accountability would go to heaven if we died today? What if some catastrophe fell or something fell on this building? We're all crushed and killed instantaneously. Wouldn't it be a great blessing to know that every one of us would go to heaven? But isn't it sad to know that if we don't change our ways, if we don't repent, and be baptized, or as Christians, if we don't confess our sins and, you know, live for the devil during the week and come on Sunday morning and look pious sitting here in these pews. <clears throat> people say, you mean people do that? I say, I don't ever see it, but I hear people say, you just don't know what's going on. There are Christians that I've been told that go out and live for the Lord, for the devil during the week <clears throat> and then come and sit in pews like this with piousness on their face and everything's all right. Is everything all right? No. Not recipients of heaven. Not prepared for heaven. Serious business, isn't it? So we set before us life and death this morning. And the question that I keep pursuing is this. Why would anyone choose hell? When you have the possibility of choosing heaven. What do you think on that? Let's stand and let's sing to each other. If you need to respond, will you please? <clears throat>